Hi there and welcome to Story Time with Uncle Bill. Hoping to get you ready to eat. Wash my hands right quick. Going back out to sea, folks. One of my favorite things out there. Quick and easy. Barbecue pork chops. You make it any, but it was always going to be baked. Only most people can have time to do all that frying. But it was on the occasion, especially when it was flat, they would fry something. Fish, chicken, but it was rare. Everything normally because we had an oven. The oven is your, is your main source of uh, how you're going to do things. So, we got some big old bone in pork chops here. I was just coming out of federal prison. And they had asked me My stepdad had bought a um a commercial boat, commercial fishing boat with a commercial license and they're hard to get. And they don't sell them no more. It's just, um, so it's impossible. You just can't do commercial fishing unless you have that commercial fishing license. And you have one. But it's sometimes hard to find people that go out there on the boat because they, they get motion sickness at the, um, the oven to 400. We're going to make uh, mashed potatoes and gravy with it. Damn, I always do that. Um, we always use the same season. You want to see it? We'll check it out real quick. So my first captain was Captain Barry out of Moorhead City. Barry was in his 50s, I think. White dude. Slim build. Could drink like a fish. They all could. I'm the only one that didn't drink out there. So we got the pepper. You don't need a lot of salt. It's already salty enough, but I'll add the salt to everything. I just do. I got some of this adobo right here. Barry, Barry was, Barry, man, Barry was a great guy. Barry, Barry taught me a lot, how to tie fish in knots, how to catch fish, how to handle fish, how to identify fish. It's Tony Sriracha. All right. That's with the one side looks like. I'm slip it. Um, how to how to how to use how to use a hydraulic rod and wheel. Um, damn, man, he just taught me everything. How to navigate the boat. How to read a uh, how to read Doppler. How to read the Loran system. Um, you know, in case anything ever happened. And I told him that's what I wanted to do. And he was excited, you know. All those guys, they've been fishing together out there for years, and they would jump boats. You know, um, people would get out of the business, and like none of them had a boat. They worked for whoever had a boat that wanted to hire them. Like, I didn't only fish on my stepdad's boat. I fished on other boats, too. Three. Three other boats. All right. We'll call that code. What do you think? Right. Pop this in the oven right quick. I need to adjust that rack. You always want to put things in the center rack if you can. I think I baked the chicken in there. I baked the chicken in turkey.
that's not the note. Hmm. that boat. Could never figure out how he did. I watched him one time for hours. It reminded me of Mickey Mouse. When you see that commercial with Mickey Mouse was playing like the playing like a he was the maestro, the dude with the little stick doing the orchestra guy, the conductor, or whatever they're called. At the wheel in a storm. I never saw his eyeballs. You know how I never saw his eyeballs, folks? Because I was this close to him. And his eyeballs, his eyelids were completely shut. He was asleep. There's a a compass. Moves with the boat. And the compass got these numbers on it. And it's a coordinates. So um, you punch in the navigation thing and it say go on a 150, 150 coordinates. So you just keep turning the damn wheel until it hits 150 and then you just stay somewhere along that line. And that's normally 150, just considered a straight line to wherever. Like your major highway. Um, uh, I-95, US 258, you know, whatever, that's that's what 150 indicates. And you could be off a little bit, you know what I mean? There ain't no stop signs or turn signals or anything to stop you. You know, you go 152 or 145, just keep going back. You know, you'll veer off, but you're in the damn ocean, you know. You, you'll be okay, just don't hit no ships or don't hit anything. Don't hit anything. That's the best thing to do is just hit water. You're always on the lookout. That's something you, you may not be thinking about. Pieces of wood. Remember, thousands of things have wrecked, got eaten, um, been destroyed in our potential things that'll punch a hole in your hall and you just, sometimes you can't fix it. So you don't want to be too far from the Coast Guard. And I'm not, I was never too far from the EPIRB, the electronic positioning indicated radio beacon. This little, like a little microphone thing. When you hit it, that immediately shoots a signal to the Coast Guard. And they're coming to that signal. Be close to that thing. That's They're going to come right on time. What do you do? Helicopters or a boat. They're good. I mean, shout out, to, shout out to all the armed services. But the Coast Guard in the water, they'll get you. They'll get you. I had a few friends had to call them. And we never had to do it. Um, thank God, too. But I know there's times. I know there's times I wanted to. If you ain't never been out on a boat in a storm, in the middle of nowhere, where you can't see the land, <laughs> it's so black, lightning all around you. That's not even good anyway. Water is the best conductor of electricity. Just goes right through. It goes right through you. Goes right on through you. You know you're seventy percent water. It'll go right on through you. That's why they have the electric chair. It goes right on through you. Not a good thing. Right on through you is not a good thing. Many storms. You know you try to you try to plan trips around them, but some storms only last five minutes. Some storms last hours, and and you, you're willing to take a chance. You just you know ride out the storm. Literally ride out the storm. But it ain't like it's not the same. It's not like being in the car. It's not like being in the house. It's not even like being in the woods or anything. It's like being in the ocean. And there ain't no, like, what, the safety precautions? There aren't, there aren't any. You're not supposed to be out there. Huh. You, you do your best you can to avoid lightning at all costs. Hell at all costs. And we had, like, a little, little canopy thing. I don't even think it was all the way closed in. It just cruised. The underneath underneath compartment. 
the, in, in the in the in the front of the boat. Got it. That's the only way you had to go underneath. And then it had two. It had uh, four sleeping areas and about this much. You had enough room to breathe. Never went down there. And I went. I tried to for the experience, just to say, hey, I went down there and I tried to sleep at least one night. You never slept longer than two hours. The ocean never stopped moving. The engine never cut off. Your 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 brain doesn't cut off because you you know you're either excited about the fish you caught or you're disappointed about the fish you didn't catch or you you know the current ain't working so you're constantly moving to find a spot that you can actually drop a line and catch a fish. You know there's always so many things you. <laughs> I always used to, are we closer to Africa than we are to North Carolina? The furthest I ever went out, it never looked like we left North Carolina. That was a long way out there. So Barry, Barry wanted, well Barry wanted McMahon, I'm talking about two hours. I'm talking about, he was so drunk. And look, I sat there. That's that's what that's what sometimes boating life could be, you know. Way a fishing life could be. It, it's a waiting game, um, and a numbers game in the end when it comes down to the fish. And I didn't have anything else to do but sit there and watch him for two hours. I was scared. I was talking to him. I was like, man, because he wasn't talking. He was just driving the boat. It's a. It's a 42 foot long, 15 foot wide boat. I don't remember what kind of boat it was. It's called the Sea Robin. I do know that. And uh, one day, he had me on watch. Everybody was asleep. This is one of the few times, few times, that everybody was sleeping. It was cool, and I was at I was at the wheel. Um, we were anchored. We weren't even moving. We were anchored. I don't I don't remember why we were anchored, but we were anchored. Maybe because they wasn't driving, they were sleeping. That makes a lot more damn sense. Don't ask. Excuse me. So uh, uh, I think it was my other entrance. Oh, yeah, that was my other entrance. And, um, so I was sitting up at the boat. I couldn't sleep, not 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 with nobody else up. So I, I and I'm always I, you're supposed to be scanning for the lights. You're looking for a red light, a green light, and a white light. And um he told me the only ones I ever need to worry about were they all lined up. I'm a rookie. I'm a, they call it greenhorn. It's about two, three o'clock in the morning. You know. It, And, and you know, inside, and when you're inside by the wheel, you're in, uh, you know, it has the glass. It's not really good to see out at night. You could just see, like, and I don't have good eyesight through things and or far away. I could just make out colors really well. So, about two, three o'clock in the morning, half dead like this, not going to even, not, I'm not going to sleep. You forget that. And I look and I hear a little beep, meaning something's hit hit the radar. I look out, learn how to you know read how everything was. I see the light, and it, and it shows how far it is. And the furthest one, the furthest on the thing is five miles away, and then it's four miles, and the closer you get, it's zero miles. So this thing's five miles away, but they uh, uh, the big ships are humming. They go a lot faster than you think. They're big. They just look smooth going through the water. But they're humming. And dude told me, like, I don't know anything, folks. And I believe everything you tell me. That's why I say don't lie to me. Because then you make me look stupid. I can make you, and I get mad. Just, just don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. Tell me the right way to do things, too. He said if they hit you, if, they, if one of those ships hit us, it won't even stop because it won't even know it hit us. That's how big they are. That's how fast they are. That's how powerful they are. It'd be no different than 
your tire running over a bug at 55 miles an hour. You wouldn't notice. You can even squash the bug all over the place. So, guess what I'm not never going to be? I'm not never going to be the bug. If any of those lights ever lined up, I know what to do. We're banning shit. We need to get the hell out. We need to get out of the way. So I walked outside the cabin and, and, you know, looked around the thing up into the open air and those lights were lined up. I came back over and I looked at the thing five miles away. It said it's too close. So I went over to Barry. I was like, hey, Barry. Barry, get up. Barry, get up. Get up, get up, Barry. He's like, what, man? What? what, what? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Catch a fish? I was like, no, no, no. Hey, man. Because you can fish anytime you want. They would just sleep. Uh, uh, hey, I, I, man, I think a ship's gonna hit us, man. I think a ship's gonna hit us. He go, how, how do you know? How do you know? I said, all the lights lined up, man. It's coming right at us, man. I checked the Lorraine. It's, it's coming. It, all of it's lined up. It's all lined. I wouldn't even wake you up, man, if it wasn't serious. And if you know something happens to me, my mama's gonna kill you. So let's not make that happen. I'll throw you in the water. Come on, man. Just, just check. Just check. He's like, all right, man. Don't worry about it. No, okay, 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 okay. But he's not moving. But he keeps saying, okay. I was like, Barry, come on, man. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, just another minute. Like, Barry, what if we ain't got another minute, man? Come on. So he gets up. He goes over to the run because he's inside. The, he's already inside the thing. He's the only one inside there. The rest are sleeping out in the back. And uh, he looks at me. And I'm, I'm standing right next to Loran, making sure... Um, I want to see his face. I always just, I love reactions. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he has some glasses on. He didn't even have a shirt on. Matter of fact, he had to put his shirt on and he had his glasses. He took his glasses and he wiped, it, he wiped his glasses on his shirt. He put his shirt on and uh, he looks at the thing. He looks out the window. He farted. <laughs> he caught me off guard. He goes, he looks out the thing, he said, oh, them lights are lined up. And the boat, you remember, mind you now, the boat's rocking the whole time, so I'm right behind him. And uh, he goes, man, that's, uh, that's pretty close. He goes, hey, do me a favor. He goes, what? He goes, don't wake me up no more. <laughs> Go up to the bow of the boat, man, and... and See how cool it is. It's, now, I want you to mind you folks. It's pitch black. I, I don't think there's any lights on. Like all the lights are off. We're not fishing. Like the only lights are from the from the instruments. From you, the fish fighters on. The Loran. The radar. Uh, the weather thing. That, that, that's all. The It's pitch black. And, and there ain't like. If you've never been on the ocean. Two o'clock in the night. Man it's black. Might not might be able to tell the difference. It could be, it, 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 and if you're not careful, it's easy for your mind to play real. Because you know megalodon and the crackling and the, and the giant octopus and and sharks any damn way and, and and anything else that could come out of there. I do not. I mean, I've I've been there's been many times where I've had to. You need to get it together, dog. I mean, you're on this boat. You're not in that water, so. Life's good. Nothing's wrong. You know, anxiety. Um, you know, and, and it could get the best of you, you know. Uh, I mean, that, that's keeping it real. I mean, scared. Like I am right now. I'm like, man, I, that, you, you told me when when things like this line up. And he's, I'm, I'm talking, but he he's going to sleep. You told me, man, when they line up like this, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to move. Like, I'm ready to move the boat. I mean, I can move the boat. You know what I mean? Like, I can't move the boat. Um, he said, man, just go to the bow of the boat. And I'm looking down at him at the whole time. The whole time, this ship's still coming. And you lose track of time. It's easy to lose track of anything you do. You know, but... So... I mean, he had told me, he was the dude who told me to go to the bow of the boat to look at the dolphins when the dolphins blew, when that dolphin blew the spout in my face. 
one of the best moments I ever had. And it was right there at the bow of the boat, too. And mind you, when you got to go up to, you got to go past this little, you got to go where the cabin is, and ain't nobody a little walkway. It was a real bad sea that night, though. I'll never forget it. So I came and looked out, and, and I didn't even really, I didn't see the lights anymore. Didn't, and, and almost didn't even think anything of it. And came out, went out to the bow. By then, I, I was, I was, I had my sea legs. I, I could, to me, it, it was nothing to walk on anything anymore. I got up to the bow, uh, and I had a rope, grabbed a rope. The ship was already there. It was already there. It was already there. Just this, I couldn't, you can't even see all the way up. I, I didn't see the top of it. That's why I couldn't see the I couldn't see the top of it. I couldn't see the bottom of the ship. Not without like the highest point, the where everybody stands and where everything is. I couldn't see that. That's how tall the ship was going up. Like like I heard the water, the the bilge pump, the water that the the you know the slice the water. Yeah, just heard it go. But you could feel you could feel it. Now I got all boats reach out and touch the damn thing. It, it, I don't know how it didn't hit us. I don't know why. That's not predictable. We could we could have moved. Could have just got out of the way. I was pretty upset about it. I'll tell you, I, I, was, I was more than mad because, you know, you told me we, we ain't supposed to be doing this. They won't even know, man. And look, I'm going to be honest with you folks. I, I, is, you ever thought about just being in the middle of the ocean? You ever watched Jaws? Or deep sea, I said I haven't watched that, or or anything else, or I survive. Where you, you you know you have to wait. Oh, you're going to be rescued. Good chance. Good chance. The coast guard, the passing ships. When when you went out fishing, normally everybody else went out fishing too, or there was a day behind you, or they went the day before, depending upon storms and weather. Because you know you got to watch small craft advisor. Mostly everything depended upon the wind. Wind causes waves. Wave causes instability of air. I mean, you, you, this is what it's like when you when you go out there with waves. You can't do anything doing that, and you can break your boat apart. You got to be careful. That's that's why they have those things like that, saying, "Hey, it would be a good idea if you didn't go out because you'll have to go to the coast guard, and nobody needs to be risking their lives. Not not for some fish or whatever you're trying to catch." But it was cool as an experience. I'm not. I'm not sure if it was one. You know that I was like, "Hey, God, you know what I like to do? I almost like to get run over by a big old cargo ship. One so long and so tall. You know, you could have ate lunch and never seen the top of it. Still have drink left over before it passed you." Good juice right here. Look at that. That's gold right here. There was one fish. I don't really. I looked it up. In um. I didn't hardcore look it up. But uh, he called it a strawberry grouper. They were normally about the same size. They didn't get super big like all the other groupers that we caught. But he was adamant on not even letting me go near it. If I caught one, I gave my rod up to somebody else, one of the other dudes that fished. And they would do it. Every time. 
I probably only caught 20 of them. Wasn't like a fish we caught a lot. But when we caught it, we kept it. So that means it costs money. Look, I got the sweet, uh, sweet Baby Ray's honey barbecue sauce right there. I'm going to be honest with you. My favorite barbecue sauce is Bullseyes. It just is. And I don't know why I don't have any. Just gonna lightly coat those. Then we're gonna heavily coat the top. You see, we got plenty of seasoning on them. I mean, he was adamant. Never. Don't touch the damn fish. Just like that. Cuss me. I don't let people cuss me, folks. So it meant something. I mean, he was he cared about me enough and respected that fish enough that I was not to and I never I never chanced it. I never was like, oh man, it's just a fish. What if I was out here by myself? He he told me cut the line. If that fish it it, it could be an accident. You gotta pull it off and, and you and, and you could be a master at it. One of them spines hits you. We're too far out to see. We're just too far out to see. And I was like, man, you think it's that bad for real? He goes, yeah, oh yeah. I said, okay, I won't never do it. I promise you. If it means that much, that you really think I should never do it, I won't never do it. All right, we'll start out with that right there. They're getting you ready to eat, folks. Put that back in Anything else? Oh, hey, hold on. This is a blah, blah, blah. Catch it like this. Even how to use a gaff. If you never use a gaff, it could be. You ever lose a fish because you didn't gaff it right, they, they, they cut you out for that. You know, especially, you know, you're catching $300, $300 dollars fish. And that's what some of those fish were. You know, but you could catch an amberjack, a 100 pound amberjack, and that's only 100 bucks. Full of worms, man. People eat the hell out of it. Nasty. We used to, we used to take, because you just can't see what's really going down at the bottom. But you got to think about it. You know, you got this fish coming up on our line. Amberjacks, barracudas, sharks, any any predator fish. They're just, they're taking on, I, I have caught heads, folks. Huge heads, heads wave. When I hold up the head, you can't see none of me. It's just the head, too, where the gills start. A head, a big mouth. Something came by and chomped it off. Ate the, took the whole body. And you know the body's got to be this long. Fat fish, gone. And still, and, and look, the, the fish, the head by itself be 50, is $50. But the Orioles love fish heads. I mean, they just love it. They make soups and stuff. It's 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 pretty good. They, they love the eyeballs. So, I mean, you ever think about catching a fish head or ever caught a fish and had like a turtle or something, uh, something bite it off, and you get disappointed and throw that fish head 
And if you did keep it, you put it in your garden as compost or something. No, he's selling that. Like I went, I went to the Oriental market and it was like, hey, it was like fifty dollars. I'd have took five. You want to try? You want to try? Yeah. But and they, man, they're serious about the seafood now. Because they, they, if you ever watched um, any any cooking shows over in the Far East, you know when they talk about cooking seafood, they everything's moving. Everything, squid, fish, octopus, shrimp, everything's moving, and then they, then they may cook it. <laughs> you know, they cut it up right there, and it's game on. <laughs> I, I I can't. I try. I can't do that. I don't like sushi too much. I, I just don't. Me and Barry was serious about that strawberry grouper. Stepdad ended up selling the boat. It just it just cost so much money to, to operate it. We lost an anchor every time we went out. Sometimes to catch the fish, you got to go where the bottom of the ocean is not cooperating with you. You know, the, the bottom of the ocean is not all flat and sandy. You know, there's 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 all kind of different crevices and cracks. There's all kind of shipwrecks. And every time we lost an anchor, it was 250 bucks. Before we even went out, before we left the dock, we was already $2,500 in the hole. We had to make $2,500 to break even for the house. That's before anybody makes any money to cover the gas um, and other, the food and other expenses and bait to go out and ice to go out there to fish. You know, everything's a process and, and it took money just to start it. And then you got the hope that you catch because sometimes we went out and we didn't we didn't catch the fish. We caught fish, but you know, maybe we caught twenty two hundred dollars. So we had to split minus three hundred bucks between us. Luckily we had a captain that did, or a, you know, an owner that didn't need no money, so it'd just be tacked on to the next bill. So on the next bill would be minus twenty five hundred dollars before we start and minus seventy five dollars for myself. So if we came back and we made five, if I made five hundred dollars for this trip, minus the seventy-five, I get four twenty-five. And I never get, I didn't never care about none of that because I was always amazed that I was getting paid to go fishing. I loved it and caught a lot of fish and handled and gutted every one of them about the strawberry grouper. And a couple years after he sold the boat, they was like, "Hey, Barry's in the hospital." Yeah, snowy group of God. Little prick. Just a little. You got. They're not even like real hardcore spines neither. They just full of venom. And he was in there for a week and caught septicemia, blood poisoning. Had to take his leg. Might even had other medical problems. I don't, I don't remember right now. Uh, but they had to take his leg. And it was like two weeks after that, he passed away. Just came to the. I hated to hear that, man. He was a good dude. I had other. I, um, he had. I had went on a couple other boats. So I had a, a couple other captains and stuff. Um, I always used to ask about him, but I never seen him again. I was always appreciative because when I went on those other boats, um, you know, it wasn't I wasn't I wasn't a greenhorn. I could do everything everybody else did. I can catch just as many fish if the fish was there. I mean, we all had the same skill set. You know, you're not you're not gonna be fast. You just we're just gonna catch fish. I'm, I'm on here to catch fish. You got somebody you could depend on to catch fish, and Barry was really instrumental in that. And a uh, dude named Little Bill, um, he would end up, I would end up going to other boats because of him. Barry moved or something, and uh, like it was Cannonball, and, uh, and I can't remember the other dude's name. All of my Moorhead City, but boy, he, he used to get off the boat. 
and they was like, hey, man, you don't mind washing the fish? So we used to have to dock up at the thing, and, you know, you got $10,000 worth of fish. It ain't the same thing as gold and, like, gasoline and eggs right now, but, you know, you can go in there and pull one fish and get three four hundred dollars so I would sit on the fish. I'd get, you know, I'd probably get sell, recept, uh, sell, sell reception, make a phone call, talk on the phone, and uh, watch the fish. And I never really thought about, like, I never did just think about this. And all the fish that you could think of, uh, bee liners, uh, red snappers, pink snapper, trigger fish, um, snowy groupers. Black groupers, uh, Warsaws, um, did I say trigger fish, uh, croakers, spots. No, that shit we saw, we didn't catch that. That was, <laughs> we got that from the fish market, from the same fish market. So, so my, now my stepdad was a middleman to the boat also. He would buy the, he would buy the stuff off the boat and stuff from the fish market all at the same place and then he would take it and go to raleigh and sell it to all the oriental shops out there it's like a two hour two and a half hour drive and they got fresh seafood, and they, they, they just need to have that fresh seafood they can't get it live they got to have it fresh and they know believe me i mean i mean you're talking about people that are serious about their freshness they go in there and they grab the they grab those shrimps and <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. How much? How much pound? How much pound? Five dollars. Oh, you yeah, take it all. I take it all. That's how they buy. It's just like that. You got the good stuff. They want to see. They want to see some slime on the fish. They tell you about it. They're looking at the eyes. They're looking at the gill. I mean, open everything. Looking at the butt. See if it's cleaned out. Because when you catch those deep sea fish, if you don't know, we got the gut them out there. You got to gut them out there. So when you see, when you if you go to the supermarket and you see all your fish and already gut, it, it wasn't gut when it came. Normally it's gut out there. Unless people come in every day. See, we didn't come in every day. We didn't come in at all every day. We go out there four or five days. Kind of use the bathroom in the bucket. You now Barry's the one who even told me how to go to the bathroom in the bucket. You know, so many things. I mean, a lot. There's a lot of. A lot of things that you don't grasp when you hear, hey, do you want to go fishing? Do you want to go commercial, deep, deep line fishing? Long line, you want to go fishing? It even crossed a lot of things. I mean, a lot of things even crossed my mind. But after three or four, hey, look, two, three trips, hey, you're in there. And you'll know if that's if that's something that you'll want to do. And I loved it, man. <clears throat> I, I remember fishing one time. I used to because Barry, I had my little phone and it just took shitty pictures. Um, I would love to hear, "Hey Bill, hey Bill, come here." And it was Barry because Barry knew that I I loved anything to be an outdoor, so it was always going to be something. He didn't never prank me. It was always something inside me. And you see a big turtle. Just a huge turtle right up on the boat. And see, I've never been on no cruise up to this point. I've never been out on the ocean. So when I saw that big turtle, i never seen a big turtle like that on land. Not a sea turtle. Um, and, you know, he's just sitting there looking at you. And I'm thinking, man, can we feed it? And we tried to feed it, but he took off. And then saw a turtle that didn't have no legs. Little baby turtle. None. Didn't have no legs. I was trying to get it. And, you know, they don't have anything that, you know, like a box turtle that could go and hide its hinges. And I was trying to catch it and, and it flipped over and it wasn't no legs. There was none. And I still, he was able to float, but the current, and he was gone. I tried no leg. I, I felt so bad. I've never seen a turtle like that. He's about this big. I always went because it's odds are there's a seagull out there. Seagulls fly long, but you always find we out there gutting fish, you know, just throwing the guts out there, and you'll see 
And that's like something else, you know. I didn't never they didn't they didn't say like he was catching fish and then gutting them. You know, and we was catching, you know, you might you might have to cut gut two, three hundred fish, you know, just start gutting fish. You ever gut a fish like that before? That many fish? Things start popping up. You see barracudas and sharks start, little sharks start coming around and then the birds start coming in and, and you're still half fishing the whole time. You, you, I don't know how many goals you caught on the line and, and you'll get them off, you know, because we got a D hooker. Oh man, I didn't bring it again. Pop right on off. They're all flapping and beating you. Have you ever been beat up by a seagull? Two, three o'clock in the morning. You ever seen a flying fish? They'll just, you know what I mean? And mind you, like we could be the only thing out there with light, and there's a, it's a, it's bright as hell. Lights everywhere, like 50, 60 feet out, it's really bright. Dark everywhere else. So when the flying fish come, they just hit you, bing. But they're only, man, they're, they're not big. You know, about the average one's about that size. Has little wings on it. It sometimes if if you when you are able to sleep, you wake up and because they'll hit you. You just roll over. You don't even think about it. If you if 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 they're close enough, you just sling them over the boat. They're gonna come too. Believe the flying fish they always come. It, and you know I've never really ever seen them in the daytime too much. They're always at night, but they just glide right across. You just see, just. Every now and again, just out of nowhere, fish come flying through the, like a long way too. Not like no hopping, like a mullet or something. I'm talking about flying. Look like a bat or something. Pretty cool. If you've never seen it, it's really cool. But they tear you up. Like them flying, uh, them flying carp and stuff, just like that. Except these, you know, but they, they launch. They're, they're just smaller. They hit you all up in the face and you wouldn't even, you just brush them off. They stink though. And this thing is a high heaven to me. That's why I'm making it here. I think we got to make the other sides too. So remember when you, oh, I never even, man. Excuse me, folks, excuse me, folks, excuse me. water for the tank. Never caught a flying fish on the hook. But I've had, I had a thousand in the boat before. They don't catch anything neither. I've tried to put them on the hook. Or if they did, or if they did catch something that wasn't worth talking about. And then use the cold water for the gravy. I wish you could have seen how damn drunk he was in that storm. Just have being in the storm alone, folks. You got lightning around. It's like you ain't nowhere to hide. It's the elements. It's it's the nightmare. It's not a hurricane or a tornado, but we put salt in the water for the um, potatoes. We put pepper in the water for the potatoes and the gravy. That was ironic. It was the fish. Oh, that barbecue sauce hit me right in that vinegar. 
Something about vinegar. I'm putting some, uh, I'm putting some butter in the taters. Some tater water. I'm to whip these. Whip it. Watch how fast Lama is done. Ooh, there we go, there we go. I got a good, hey look, you ever seen how much gravy a pack is? And I can make gravy. I take that gravy, that pork chop right there and make a good old gravy. But I got this McCormick turkey gravy. Put it on my every kind of gravy. I'm a gravy fanatic. They normally went over a dollar for it. I even think they had this at a dollar fifty. They had it for 25 cents. So I bought 10 of them for 15. Probably 15. Now on the boat, we had a lot of gravy biscuits. Gravy biscuits was a go-to. But it would be offset by the barbecue pork chops. And I like them good enough. I think pork chops are like cheaper than chicken or something. It always boils down to that when it comes out here on the ocean. A lot of times we just ate sandwiches with the guts on the with the gut fish guts on us because you, you you know if you got on a school of fish you got to catch fish there ain't no if ands buts or about it you got to go You talk about fun. This is the most fish you ever caught in a day. Or the biggest fish that you ever caught at one time. Or the... I caught seven on one line with hooks spaced apart 12 to 16 inches. Hooks this big. I'm calling call them jack hooks. I don't know what the real name of them was. And the hooks got hawks and all that. I would... I don't remember. Seven fifty pounders. Snowy groupers. Each one at least. I mean fat around. Got a big old tongue sticking out. You get on a school of bee liners. We had these clasps so you can just change hooks out and uh, weights. Normally use a five pound weight up to shoot probably 40 pounds we had metal metal line it wasn't no wasn't no uh fishing line it was actually like metal wire you're not you're not going to miss a fish because the line broke it's almost impossible you got to catch a monster like moby dick or something When I caught the when I caught those seven fifty pound fish, I think I had thirty pound weight uh, on the uh, on the line. It was incredible, incredible that we was catching fish. It, it took it took uh, you know you hear people oh I, I reeled it in took five or six hours. It took thirty minutes on hydraulic rod and reel, which is the easiest way to fish. You know it's a lot easier than. You know, reeling that up, but that's a long time. And most of that was current. It wasn't about it wasn't about how heavy the fish was. The line didn't matter. You would pull the, the current and the pulling would pull the fish off. Oh yeah.
Mm-hmm. Put that wax paper in there so we didn't have that burning. Look how good the mashed potatoes cook. How long did that take? A minute. Bam. Oh, yeah. Should have you close now. Should have you close now. I'm hungry, folks. You hungry? Those pork chops are bigger, so I'm gonna put those in longer. Here she is, folks. Barbecue baked pork chops, mashed potatoes, and gravy. Well, I sure hope this got you ready to eat because it sure got me. And just realized something. I only made one side again. Can't believe it did. Don't have no bread. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. What we can do is try what we got right now. I hope this got you ready to eat. I'm starving. I sure wish I could share this with you. Mm. Mm, see the steam coming off? The way I like to do it, I got to give me some taters and some gravy on every bite. Way too hot, dude. Mm. All my fishing buddies, man. Had a blast with you. A lot of fun. Got a lot more stories to come. It's kind of ironic, man. My man Barry passed away. Trying to keep me from the fish. Yeah, till this day, I won't ever go around because of him. Woo! I'm about to tear it up, folks. I sure wish I could share it with you. Hope everybody's having a good day and staying safe. If you can, hit that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't.